Hi everyone, welcome back for the third lesson. In the previous two lessons, we learned about what is Web 1, what is Web 2, and how we are communicating with this uh, dynamic web, which we call Web 2. And we said that we need a middleman to communicate this dynamic web. And we also said that this was our website, and this was Jackie here, and Jackie had a hat, let's say, here, Jackie with the hat. And this was Instagram. So let's keep the same example. And we said that we were communicating through this server here. And this was the, actually the closest Facebook server to us. So it can be faster. So this is the general idea as we talked before. But we said that that was problematic for many reasons, like we were giving too much data and we couldn't control the consequences of the situation. So here, instead of this structure, and you can think this as the king in the structure because we are working with a single entity. So instead of this structure, what blockchain brings to the table is that we have a decentralized servers. So instead of having one server and communicating with that one, here we have a couple of servers. So you can think this structure like a board of servers. And we have actually many more. Okay, here's my dots. Okay, now we have board of servers. And let's make this a little bit more like Instagram. Yep, that's exactly the same. So let's see what this decentralized structure can offer to us. Here, once JK wants to communicate with the Instagram, let's say this is this Instagram, decentralized Instagram. So once JK with the hat wants to communicate with this Instagram, which is decentralized Instagram in our example, we go through this decentralized structure. So instead of the closed server, we go here, this structure, with its consensus mechanism, decides which server is going to get this job. The job meaning the action that this Jackie wants to do. So let's say this one is going to do the job. Then uh, since this one is doing, we need a mechanism to see if it's actually doing a good job, if the action is literally what we intend. So this other three of them, actually looks after of this action then after this centralized system have the consensus that this action can be done then we are actually doing this action this action can be logging in uploading some videos photographs writing some text or anything so the communication with the internet here actually done with this decentralized entity or decentralized structure but this decentralized structure does not have any information about us what it knows is that it knows this, let's say, this address calls the login function. It doesn't know if this address belongs to Jackie. It doesn't know what Jackie likes, where Jackie lives, what this address does. It has no information. It's just doing this. So again, let's have a quick wrap up. We have a decentralized structure here. And once we want to communicate with the decentralized application on the internet, as a user, we are instead of communicating with one single server, we are communicating with this decentralized structure. One of the servers, one of the machines, or one of the nodes that we are going to call them in blockchain actually does the operation and the others just approve it. And after this process, we can update the data on this decentralized Instagram. And this data will be there forever, we cannot delete it or override it so that we can have a safe way of doing this so the data on the internet won't be disrupted later. And we said that it doesn't know any information about us other than this address calling this function. But here comes the question. We said that Facebook is making money because they are actually selling the data and the marketers are making money because actually they are making money by selling us the products. So here, as we can see, we have this looking like volunteer structure doing all the job for us. So the question comes to mind that why would they do it? 
So they do it because we are actually paying a little bit gas fee here. So this gas fee is actually a little bit cryptocurrency that we are giving with each operation to one of these machines. The machine that does the job gets the money. All right. So instead of giving our data, we are just giving a little gas fee so that these machines have the necessary motivation to do all these jobs. And then we can communicate with the internet. We are not sharing any information so that in the long term, we are not buying any hats. We are just giving a gas fee so that actually we are paying less and then we are actually protecting our data. Now, we have another question. With the Facebook example, we know that the Facebook server is going to work because Facebook is behind it and they are programming the server necessarily. But in the structure, how these nodes know what to do with this decentralized Instagram? Because this structure, if we call this a blockchain, it can have many websites. So they are not specifically built for a decentralized application. They can interact with many websites. So the question is how they know what to do when the call comes. How they know what this login function is, what should be done with this login function. We need some actually contract here. And this contract is going to work like this. So we are going to say that, okay, this is the contract. And the contract says, if an address calls login function, then this will be done. If an address calls this function, then this will be done. So these contracts are called smart contracts on blockchain. And through these smart contracts, so actually we have our smart contracts. And these smart contracts and the data is copied within each of these nodes. So every node has the same information. And the smart contract is also an information. So through the smart contracts, we are saying this knows that what should they do when the function call comes in. So again, through this gas fee, we are not giving our any data. And through the smart contracts, the nodes know what to do with the function calls. And also with this decentralized structure, we are having a consensus before moving forward with the operation that needs to be done, unlike the Facebook, because with our Facebook example, or we can put any centralized system instead of Facebook, Facebook is just a common example. Actually, we are having a more democratized structure here. So if something happens to this server, then the other servers are going to be just as fine. If this goes down, still it's going to go just as fine because even though you look four of the nodes here, generally there are thousands or tens or thousands of different nodes. So we have all this network, all this decentralized network that is working for us. So in that sense, we are actually saving our data. We are paying less in the longer run because we are just giving a little gas fees and we are not exposing ourselves with any discounted items that we really like in the right time. We are also having this functionality, the same functionality with the centralized systems through the smart contracts. But the smart contracts has a difference. With smart contracts, we can actually see what's written so that we know what should be done exactly. And unlike many centralized systems, we don't know how they are doing on the background. This is more of an open core, so we can see what is going to be done with our operations, with our requests, so we can be aware of this contract. So we know that what we are working with, we are actually saving money in the long run and we are keeping our data and we are more safe in that sense. So with the combination of the blockchain, smart contract and cryptocurrencies, we can have an automized and decentralized system that can work just as good as the centralized systems but also we wouldn't have the problem that's come with the middle map. So that's the general overview how blockchains, cryptocurrencies, and smart contracts are helping to solve this middleman problem. So thank you very much for listening to me on this video, and I will see you on the next one.